Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be bringing you the £700 gaming PC. Now this is the, uh, £700 is kind of like the high-end sweet spot for PC gaming. You are spending, fair enough, you're spending a lot of money, but you are getting the absolute best. In my opinion, in terms of what you are paying, you're going to get some very, very nice performance here for £700. Now in this build, we're going to be grabbing the i5, the 4460 from the £600 build, but in this uh, build, we're going to be grabbing instead the, uh, the the 390 graph card instead of the, instead of the 380 graph card, so the R9 390. It's around a 280 quid graph card, and that thing is pretty damn fast. And yeah, you can expect to play all your games uh, 60 FPS plus 1080p with you know high or ultra settings. You'll definitely be able to play Fallout 4 in ultra with this graphic card with frame rates well above 60 frames per second. Anyway guys, let's kind of jump into it. As always, just want to remind you that I do guarantee compatibility and that yeah, all the links will be in the description for you guys, you know, if you, you know, they're just the Amazon UK and US links. Just click on them and that's it, you'll be took to all the parts. Yeah, I do guarantee compatibility and that, yeah, this build is, uh, you know, to me, as I said, the best in terms of um, what you're paying. So this build is the best bang, bang for buck build, as you Americans always say. So uh, yes, just do bear that in mind. It's expensive, but you're getting a lot of performance. Anyhow, I'm rambling. Let's kind of um, yeah, kind of cue the video and let me show you what I've chose for the £700 gaming PC. So to get started for the processor, we're going to be grabbing the Intel Core i5-4460. This is a 3.2 GHz processor with a turbo frequency of 3.4 GHz. Now the processor itself is a true quad core and it has 6 MB of Intel Smart Cache. Overall, this is a pretty powerful processor and the maximum TDP is 84 watts, so it should run pretty damn cool. Now onto the motherboard, we're grabbing the MSI Z97 PC Mate motherboard. This is a motherboard sporting the Z97 Express chipset, hence the name. So we're going to be having some pretty rich features like RAID and having, you know, loads of uh, SATA 6 gigabit ports. Now just just to start off, we do have uh, support for 4th and 5th gen Intel Core processors on the LG1150 socket. And as well as this, we do have 4 DDR3 DIMM sockets, which, is, which supports up to 32GB of RAM, all the way up to 3000MHz. And this does support dual-channel memory and also the Intel XMP. Now onto the expansion slots, that has two PCI Express x 16 slots, which also does support AMD Crossfire technology. And as well as this, we have two PCI Express x 1 slots and also two PCI slots for legacy cards. Now onto the SATA connectivity, we have so we have six SATA 3 6 gigabit ports, which all do support RAID 0, 1, 5, and 10. So for this build, uh, you know, we, we are choosing an SSD, and it, this is one of the reasons they have actually chosen this board, because, you know, we do have native ports to support the SSD, and yeah, you know, just to make sure that it can really, you know, can, um, you know, perform at its best, because, you know, SSDs do need a 6 gigabit port, and, you know, will be seriously um, underperforming on a 3 gigabit per second port. Now, as for the USBs, this um, motherboard has four USB 3 ports and also eight USB 2 ports. Um, in terms of the USB 3 ports, two are on the back and two are uh, yeah two are available through the internal USB headers. And as for the USB 2 ports, four are on the back and four are available via two internal USB headers. Now as for the RAM, we're going to be uh, grabbing some Kingston HyperX for your memory. Yet again, we're grabbing this forever cheap uh, 8GB blue memory module running at 1866MHz. This is under £30, and to be honest, it's a complete bargain. 8GB, 1866MHz, and cast latency of 10. Really, really cheap, and a lot of people are happy with this memory, so that's exactly why we're going to be grabbing it. Now as for storage for this build, we are going with two options. We are grabbing a hard drive and also an SSD. Now as for the SSD, we are, yeah, we're picking up the Crucial BX100. It's a 250GB, 2.5-inch internal drive. And to be honest, this is pretty damn cheap. It isn't the fastest drive out there, but that's why it's cheap. The read speeds are over 500 megabytes at 535 megabytes per second, and the write speed is 370 megabytes per second. The write isn't the fastest, but I suppose what Crucial wanted to do with this BX100 drive is to give you a really cheap drive which you know has very good read speeds because at the end of the day that is what matters when loading up games and say your operating system. Now as for the hard drive we're just going to be grabbing a one terabyte generic drive 64 megabytes of cache 7200 rpm and has the uh, SATA 6 gigabit interface uh, so uh, yeah there we are just a one terabyte drive for your games once you fill up your SSD. Moving on to the graphic card, we're going to be grabbing the MSI Radeon R9 390 Gaming 8G. Now this card is ever so slightly faster than the very very popular NVIDIA GTX 970. And with, to be honest, with 2560 cores running at 1060MHz, this card is a pretty 
it is pretty damn fast. Now in terms of the memory, it does come with a whopping 8GB of GDDR5 memory via a very large 512-bit bus. The card itself does have, uh, you know, the MSI's twin throws of 5 heatsink, so it does have two large fans to keep the actual, you know, the card cool. Now, the card, many GPUs are two-slot cards, however, because this card uh, does run pretty hot, and, you know, since the 390 chip is pretty hot, um, MSI... For this particular 390, they've implemented a heatsink, which instead of taking up two slots, it takes up two and a half slots. So do bear that in mind if you want to plug anything else into your PC via PCI Express. Now onto the outputs, it has DisplayPort, HDMI, and two DVI-D connectors. Now, so the power consumption, the maximum power it can draw is 275 watts. Therefore, it does require one 6-pin and also one 8-pin PCI Express power connector, of which the power supply we're choosing today does have. Now, just one note, this card on Amazon currently says £299. If you look on the right-hand side, Amazon do sell this for £270, but only when they've got that in stock. So if you can, you know, wait out, um, I would do that, which, you know, you will be saving yourself £30. If not, feel free to just grab a generic AMD R9 390 from any other resellers like Zotac or Sapphire, for example. Now, as for the case, we're going to be grabbing the Corsair Carbard 200R. This is a compact ATX case, and as again, I'll mention it, as uh, Corsair put on their website, it says that this is a case for easy builds, and, you know, from me looking at this case inside, it has a very good internal layout, and as mentioned in the other PC builds where I've chosen this case, it can support up to four hard drives and four SSDs at the same time. That's completely, you know, that is just fantastic at the price point. And, um, you know, you're not paying a lot for this case, and to be honest, for it to have that support for drives, that's brilliant. Now, the case itself supports up to 300mm long graphics cards, with room all the way up to 430mm cards with the hard drive cages removed. Now, I strongly believe that, uh, yeah, no graphic cards surpass uh, even 400mm, but nevertheless, it's very good to have that support. Now as for CPU coolers, even though we are choosing one for this build, in terms of future upgradability, this case can support CPU coolers all the way up to 16cm in height, and yeah, the case in general can support up to 8 fans, which is absolutely genius depending on what hard drive configurations you do go with. Now lastly, as for the power supply, we're going to be grabbing the Corsair CX600. 600 watts of uh, very nice clean power. This uh, power supply, it is um, rated at 80 plus bronze and it does have all sleeved cables, which is uh, very nice to have. As for the fan, it has an 120 millimeter fan to keep it cool. And as for connectors, you have four uh, four pin uh, peripheral connectors. You have two PCI connectors, all of which are eight pins. And then you do have six SATA connectors for hard drives and also SSDs. Anyhow, uh, there are all the parts for the build. Let's kind of conclude on yeah, this build as a whole. So guys, there were the parts I've chosen for the £700 gaming PC. It's a pretty damn high-end system, and yeah, that graphic card, the MSI R9 390 card, that is pretty damn fast. Now, that card is twice as, is twice as much as the i5, um, but uh, don't let that you know, fool you. The i5 will definitely keep it with this video card, even though it is relatively cheap, at 133 quid currently, and uh, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to mention that the graph card is very expensive the CPU will keep up for you guys that are going to ask in the comment section you know we have grabbed an SSD uh, 250 gig a crucial it's the BX100 and uh, yeah we also get a hard drive it's a very nice build one thing I, I will say is that as always I do guarantee compatibility everything will work together if you guys are curious um, yeah, all parts as always are in the description and that will be kind of about it. I've shown you all the parts, uh, go buy them, build the rig and uh, come back and thank me because that's what a lot of you guys do. I really do appreciate that and uh, yeah, that'll be about it. Anyway guys, thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, comment and also subscribe and yeah, I'll catch you guys in my next video. Goodbye.